Hey everyone. In this video, I want to talk about the new hibernation capability for Azure Virtual Machines. Now, if I think about just the normal way a virtual machine has a life cycle, well, obviously there are physical hosts on which our resources run. Now, when we start a virtual machine for the first time when it's created or just it's been stopped, it gets allocated to a particular node. So that virtual machine then starts on a particular node. Now realize that virtual machine will commonly have other resources as well that live outside of the node. For example, it's probably got a managed disk for its operating system, unless it's using ephemeral. It may have data disks as well. There may be things like a public IP, but there are other resources that exist outside of the node in addition to other things on the node. For example, now this is optional, but you get that D variant virtual machine. Maybe it's also using local storage on the node for a temp drive. Windows, it puts the page file there, for example. And so what I'm paying for here, if I think about all those different resources, well, obviously, I'm paying for the public IP, I'm paying for the managed disk, I'm also paying for the compute. And inside that virtual machine, obviously it's using various resources. It's got various CPU state, it's got data written to memory, which is all about that running operating system. Now what I can then do to stop paying for the compute part of that is, well, I can stop it. I can stop the operating system that will close it down cleanly, which means it wipes out any of the state. I've lost the running applications, the processes. So I'm stopping it from the Azure control plane, the portal, the REST API, the PowerShell. It will tell via the agent, hey, close down cleanly. And once it's stopped and it then gets deallocated, well, I stop paying for the compute part because it's not allocated to a node anymore. I also would lose anything written to that temporary drive. I still pay for the managed disks and the public IP and anything written here is maintained. And that's normally fine. Hey, I'm okay losing what was the state, it shuts down the OS cleanly. But there may be some scenarios where I don't want that. If we think about our regular machines, we may hibernate them. And now the difference will be instead of stopping, so we'll take that out, what I now want to do is I want to hibernate. And what hibernate will do is it will take that content of the memory. It will take, hey, the CPU state. It may also obviously accelerated networking. There might be details about network adapters, etc. Well, on this OS disk, in the case of Windows, well, there's a hibernation file. And it's going to now save the state of these to that hibernation file. And then it will go and deallocate the machine from the node. And again, I'll stop paying for it. But now when I start that virtual machine again, it will read in the content of the memory. It will read in the content of that CPU registers, etc. And I'll be back to the exact point I was at when I did that hibernation exercise. And we'll talk towards the end about some scenarios where this is really useful, but now I have the capability of not losing the state, but still stop paying for the compute charge because again, it is getting removed from the node. Now again, I'm still gonna lose the content if I do have a temp drive. For Windows, I can't store the page file on there anymore because hey, it's gonna go away. I'd need to move my page files to, for example, the C drive, the OS disk. But now I can resume from that point. And if we go and actually look at this for a second, so let's jump over. You'll see the option when you create the virtual machine. So I have to set it when I create the VM. And you'll see this option, enable hibernation. Now it's currently in preview at time of recording. So also at the subscription level, you have to sign in for the preview feature. So on the subscription, you go and register the Hibernate resource provider. But once you've done that, if I go and look at my Hibernation VM, you can see on this VM, I have enabled it. And this VM is currently running. Now, if I jump over and actually go and look at the virtual machine, 
I don't actually have a temp disk on this one. Again, you could have a temp disk, but the key point would have to be the page file couldn't be on that temporary drive because remember the page file is storing the paged out memory that it couldn't keep in. But you also now have this hyperfile.sys and that's gonna be equal to the size of the memory and a little bit extra. That's where it's gonna save that state too. So let's have a little bit of fun. And what I'm gonna do quickly is let's just open up Notepad and this is some text. And that's all I'm gonna do. So what we'll now do is we'll jump back to the portal and notice I have this option of hibernate. Now I could still do stop. Stop will not save the state. It will abandon that and it will just do the regular stop, deallocate, it would start cleanly. But for now, I'm gonna run the hibernate. And what it will see is we'll get disconnected from the virtual machine and it will now save all of that memory of the CPU state to that hibernation file. Now, while it's doing that, we will see it adds an extension to those virtual machines. Okay, that's because it's currently unresponsive because I'm restarting it, but we would see an extension. I'll come back and I'll show you that in a second. This extension is gonna be responsible for, for example, on Windows, it's gonna run the power config um, slash H on to turn on the hibernation file. It's also gonna be tracking that every time it resumes, it checks was that successful and it will track that status. It does support a number of different operating systems. So if we jump back over, let's go and take a look here. It does support obviously Windows 11, Windows 10, uh, obviously the Windows Server 2022 and 2019, also some Linux distributions. Today, it's only for a subset of the VM sizes, but that will change as it advances and it, as it comes out of preview. And let's just go back for a second, see if that finished. There we go. So now I can see, yep, this is that extension. It adds that helps set it up and prepare it. Now I talked about that page file. The capability will automatically put the page file on the C drive. Now, if you had a specialized image, then you would need to make sure that you have put that page file on a different disk. But ordinarily, it's just going to do that for you. Now, if let's go and check the status. And what we can see here, let's just refresh this again. It's hibernated and it is deallocated. So the deallocation is, I'm not paying for that compute charge anymore. All I'm paying for is the managed disk, uh, the public IP. And what we're gonna do is we'll just start it. So let's see if that's actually starting. So it's updating, so we'll give that a second. Now there is something special uh, to pay attention to here. So if I think about what hibernation is doing, remember, it saves the memory state, it saves the CPU state. Again, accelerated networking, there's those virtual functions that get exposed to the OS, which is a specific version. Now in Azure, they get new versions of hardware. And it might be, say for example, the V5 requires a certain specification of processor and hardware, but then over time, a newer set of hardware comes out. That newer set of hardware may have a different network card, may have a newer processor, which supports additional instructions. Well, you can't resume on a different set of hardware. So realize when I use the Hibernate, it makes it a little more restrictive on where it can resume to. I cannot resume to a different generation of the hardware. It has to be able to resume to the exact same specification of where it was hibernated from. Because I can't start an OS and suddenly there's a different set of CPU instructions. Uh, there's a different networking uh, hardware exposed to me. So just realize there is a, an additional constraint that when I use the hibernate, it has to be able to allocate capacity to the exact same type of node where it was hibernated from. Now generally that, that's not gonna be a big deal, but just realize there is that additional constraint. It's doing that check. So when it's coming out of hibernation, it's saying, hey, is there the capacity available to provision and start this VM on exactly the same piece of hardware? So now it's running, that's probably still starting. Let's have a quick look. Oh no, it says it started. 
So now the test is, if I try and reconnect to that virtual machine again, let me just put in, I'm typing my credential. Yes, I wanna connect and it's starting on a different screen. It's logging me in. There's my file. So we can see my notepad is still open. It still has that bit of text in it. Explorer is still open. So I have maintained my exact state that that virtual machine was in, but I wasn't paying for the compute charge during that time I did the hibernation. So that's a really nice capability now that, hey, I have some scenario where I don't need it running, but I don't wanna lose my state. I don't wanna to have to maybe restart all of the applications. Now, before I go any further, I will say one thing. If you ever get into a position where it's having trouble starting from that Hibernate, if you just stop the VM, you'll still have the stop option. That removes that requirement to start on exactly the same piece of hardware. And then it will start up, it will see the hardware doesn't match when it tries to read the Hibernate file, it will kind of bug check and then do a cold boot. Obviously you'll lose the state, but you can just do the stop button still and it will succeed. Also, make sure you are hibernating from the Azure fabric, not within the guest OS. Same way as if I just stop within the guest OS, it doesn't deallocate it from the node. Same thing, if I just hibernate inside the OS, it's not deallocating it from the node. I have to do the hibernation through the ARM control plane, portal, PowerShell, CLI, REST API, it doesn't matter, but I have to tell the fabric, hey, I want you to hibernate, so once it's flushed it out, it can deallocate it from a node and I stop paying those compute charges. Um, one thing, because of that additional constraint that it has to be able to resume on exactly the same piece of hardware, it is not compatible with capacity reservations today because of that additional constraint it's adding. So I can't use a VM I'm hibernating with a capacity reservation because it adds too much of a constraint. And so really it's working the same as a regular VM, a regular PC. If I stop something, it cleanly shuts down the OS, it stops. When I start it up, it goes for a complete start. I lost the state, the memory, the processes that were running. If I hibernate, just like a regular PC, it's gonna save the exact state. When I start it again, hey, it's gonna resume from that. And so when would I want to use this? Now an obvious one would be, uh, a virtual desktop environment. If you think about a typical user, hey, I'm starting up my mail program, my productivity apps, I've got all these different things running. At the end of the day, I don't wanna lose all of that state and have to reopen them and find where I was the next day. But you as an organization don't wanna keep paying for that compute all night when no one's using it. So now think in that virtual desktop infrastructure scenario, now what you can do is when the user is finished for the day, hibernate the VM, saves the state, deallocates it from the node, so I stop paying for the compute charge, I just carry on paying for the disk and if it had a public IP, just like I would if I stopped it, and then at the start of the day, it resumes it from that hibernate state, the user carries on as they were. So I think about scenarios for this, VDI is gonna be fantastic. And I think the Azure Virtual Desktop, the Citrix partners, they're already saying, hey, we're gonna leverage this. The other scenario I would think about this is if you had some workload that maybe took a long time to get warmed up. So I have some scenario when I clean start it, maybe it has to go through and cache a huge amount of data, it has to start a huge amount of processes, and it just takes a really long time to be usable. So this would also be if I had something I wanted to pre-warm. So if I have things that are slow start, in terms of once the VM has started, it has to go through a huge exercise, well, with this, I could pre-warm it up, so start all those processes, and then hibernate it. And then when I need it, it will very rapidly be available and start doing that servicing. Um, and so that's it. I think it, it's there for very specific scenarios. It's not really gonna save you any additional money than if I just stopped it, other than maybe if today you are using VDI and I don't stop them because I don't wanna use the user state, well now I could use the Hibernate so it would save me money there. But for most typical server workloads, you're probably still gonna stop it. Maybe you want that clean. 
stop and that clean startup each time. But where I do have this virtual desktop infrastructure and I don't want to lose the user state, where I have those slow starting workflows that I want to pre-warm up, um, this is a, a great solution to help me with that. So I hope that was useful. I hope that explains a little bit about what the hibernation feature does. Again, at the time of recording, it's preview. And so it's only specific VM SKU supported, but I would expect that to grow. And just remember, it adds a little bit of an extra constraint because it has to be able to resume from exactly the same spec of hardware. I can't have CPU instructions and network cards changing um, from a running operating system. And uh, generally, that's not going to be an issue anyway. I'm just pointing it out as a tiny consideration. So, anyways, I hope that helps. Till next video, take care.